Acclaimed journalist Maria Ressa's work covering the Philippines government and the allegations of its human rights abuses led to a Nobel Peace Prize for her reporting. She joins us today as the Philippine government continues to levy lawsuits at her and her news outlet, Rappler, which she co-founded in 2012. Maria, we thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for having me. So your reporting in the Philippines in some ways represents trends happening globally and the idea that democracies and democratic rights and norms are really in decline. There are 34 liberal democracies in 2021. That's the lowest number since 1995. And the Asian Pacific has declined in levels of democracy not seen since 1986, according to varieties of Democracy Institute at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. Tell us what's happening in the Philippines and, and why the rest of the world needs to pay attention. So look, I think, you know, there has been a trend, but what was the spark that essentially was set the kindling on fire was really technology. Uh, what technology has done, social media companies, primarily at the beginning, this is around 2014, they're American companies, but now of course you have Chinese companies joining in, TikTok coming in, right? So these social media platforms essentially took over as the gatekeepers from from, from journalism, from news organizations. So we were held accountable for keeping the public sphere safe from lies, safe from falsehoods, alternate realities. Once technology companies took over, um, lies by design now spread at least six times faster than facts. That has turned the incentive structure upside down, the election of more illiberal leaders, all around the world, it's bottom up exponential lies where the interests of the social media companies, these technology companies that make more money through this, and the interests of power of dictators to be people who have no consciences, man insidiously manipulate that bottom up is then met top down with the same meta narratives and lies. And you're right in the middle of several lawsuits from the Philippine government. You and your team at Rappler actually have go bags ready to leave at any moment. What is the government there doing to you and, and your team? I think you're seeing this happening all around the world. Uh, right now in, in India, a documentary that the BBC did that the government didn't like had tax collectors coming, going through their offices. It's the weaponization of the law. It's the the weaponization of free speech to attack those who are trying to hold power to account. That inevitably puts journalists on the front lines, but we're not alone. Human rights activists are, are hounded the same way, and it's the methodology is the same. Are you concerned at all for, for your life? Do, do you fear for your safety? It's been, you know, we've been living with this since 2016. Um, in 2018, the government uh, investigated us in 14 different initiatives. We've learned to cope, to deal, but as you can see, this isn't just happening in the Philippines. Uh, the Committee to Protect Journalists reported that journalism deaths increased by 50% from 2021 to 2022. Why are governments and people in positions of power cracking down on journalism? We're the front lines for facts. If you don't have facts, you can't have truth. Without truth, you can't have trust. If you don't have these, you don't have a shared reality, you cannot have democracy. Democracy isn't just about people yelling and screaming at each other. It's also about taking the time to listen, to come up with a shared reality and find the right compromises going forward. Now, you actually grew up here in the United States. You moved here uh, when you were 10 after martial law was enacted in the Philippines. Uh, we had the State of the Union recently. Are you concerned about what's happening in the United States with regards to democratic institutions? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> Essentially, what Russian disinformation did in the 2016 elections, and you have a thousand page Mueller report with numerous footnotes looking at this, you know, it was able to bypass institutions and attack American citizens at the core. So essentially it is the molecules of democracy, the individual citizens whose ideas of fact and fiction, uh, well, first they were enraged, fear, anger, hate, 
chasms in society and identity politics, Black Lives Matter attacked on both sides. The goal wasn't to, to push forward anything. The goal was to tear society apart using identity politics, which in many instances just was the spark on the kindling. America being as weak as it was, the election of Donald Trump led to massive repercussions, including here in the Philippines. You know, of course, all of these changes are worse on the global south. We absorbed the losses because our institutions were weaker. But what we saw in the United States is that, my gosh, it, your institutions aren't as strong as we had hoped and as certainly as you need. Where America goes now in the next few elections is going to be where the world goes. So good luck. The U.S. military has made investments in the Philippines. Do you think that the U.S. should put more requirements on countries that it gives aid or, or where it has a military presence? I think we're moving from the age of, you know, what 9-11 did was it pushed us into a post-Cold War period. That changed the way security structures thought. Then once we moved to this area of asymmetrical warfare that these types of groups can actually tear down governments. Structures of governance, what I like to call old power, are now being turned upside down by new power. This is technology. If we don't find the right solutions forward, it will get worse. Fascinating and really at the same time scary stuff that we're talking about here. Maria Ressa, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.